Okay, um, so cell structure uh, plus physiology, all right? So when you're talking about the structure of the cells, we are going to look at uh, uh, anatomy of the cells, the morphology of the cells, all right? This is the anatomy, anatomy stroke morphology, morphology of cells. Then physiology, Part, we are looking at the function of cells. Function of cells. So it's just a combination. So we define first what cell is. Okay. The term cell refers to the basic structural, basic structural and functional, functional unit. Okay, of an organism. That's what cell is. So in short, what gives organisms their basic structure or the structure at the basic level is uh, cells. And then the functional part of all organisms basically is still traced back to cells. Is the basics. Okay, so functional level is traced back to cells or cellular level. All right, structural level of an organism was still traced back to, to cells. And that's what we mean when we say cells are basic structural and the functional units uh, of an organism. Now, remember organization of life, how life is organized, organization of life. Okay, remember you have a particle uh, that form atoms. Okay, atoms determines elements all right each element contain each element contain an atom so atoms are found in elements all right elements when you put them together together with atoms and the particles they are going to form a cell a cell when put together specialized cells with similar properties or similar specialization they form a tissue okay a group of tissues uh, form organs. A group of organs forms system. A group of systems forms an organism. That's how life is organized. But the main purpose for this lecture is to explain uh, what cell is or what cells are. All right. So types of cells. Types of cells. So the earliest cells to be discovered were prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells all right prokaryotic cells all right these prokaryotic cells they don't have these they don't have membrane bound organelles they don't have membrane bound organelles all right they don't have organelles like mitochondria rough endoplasmic reticulum goja apparatus those are not there so they don't have the membrane bound organelles in short no organelles again no true Nucleus. They have a false nucleus. Okay. Example are bacteria. They are prokaryotic in nature. You call those prokaryotic organisms. All right. So these are smallest cells. These are small cells. All right. Very, very important. Then you also have some larger cells, which you call eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells, these now have membrane bound organelles these have membrane bound organelles they have membrane bound organelles like uh, mitochondria you know true nuclear uh, goja apparatus etc they have membrane bound organelles they also have a true nuclear where there is genetic material so very very important example are the animal cells are prokaryotic uh, are eukaryotic animal cells are eukaryotic cells Human cells are eukaryotic cells. Plant cells are eukaryotic cells. Okay. All those are eukaryotic cells. That, so that's what a cell is and that's what cells are. That's basically what I wanted you to know under this part. So the next part is to understand the structure of the cell and the, the functions of each structure. Okay. So let's look at uh, 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 composition of the cell in terms of structure, structural composition. So cells contain one, the cell membrane, cell membrane, 
and then they also have uh, a structure known as the protoplasm protoplasm okay cell membrane is the outer covering outer covering okay which is semi permeable media semi permeable or selective media semi permeable or selective media of exchange media of exchange okay between intracellular fluid compartment and extracellular fluid compartment that's what cell membrane is all right and it does other functions other than being a media of exchange the cell membrane is important also acting as a barrier all right it protects the cells all right and it's also important for uh, cell recognition cell recognition cell membrane uh, also contains some receptors for recognition uh, of certain uh, immune cells and even hormones and even drugs all right etc that's what the cell membrane is and it's also important also in immunity it's also important in immunity certain components of the cell membrane are important as a uh, 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 in immune um, study protoplasm on the other hand is referring to the cytosol there which is the fluid component and the, also the organelles that are there so organelles and the cytosol uh, form the protoplasm is what um, is the part of the cell bound by the cell membrane all right so what are these organelles and the, what is this cell membrane in details so we start with the cell membrane there are a few things that i just wanted you to know about the cell membrane cell membrane is composed of uh, phospholipid bilayer phospholipid bilayer it also contain other lipids as well other lipids it also contain proteins it also contains carbohydrates all right it contain water it contain electrolytes all right so these are very very important so proteins form about 55% uh, percent of the uh, of the cell membrane then the phospholipids and the other lipids you know they are in different percentages about 25% percent, they are phospholipids all right very very important and then other lipids they come down cholesterol and other things they come down you know uh, with lesser percentages which you don't have to worry much no one will ask you much about the percentages but in terms of size the cell membrane uh, ranges from 7 nanometers okay to about 10 nanometers so it differs from textbook to textbook okay so that's what basically uh, forms the cell membrane the major thing in the cell membrane there is the phospholipid bilayer phospholipid bilayer uh, uh, these are two layers of phospholipids all right so we call it bi because there are two two layers okay very very important how do these phospholipids are a phospholipid is a complex lipid this is a complex lipid meaning uh, 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 or conjugate lipids if you want conjugate lipid meaning it contain phosphate and the lipid conjugated so it's one of the major uh, component of the cell membrane is the phospholipids among the lipids so a phospholipid just to remind you how it looks like all right so you have a, a lipid bonded to a phosphate so basically it has a head all right the head is considered to be polar okay meaning it is soluble the head is soluble meaning reactive with water reactive with the water it can interact with water so the other term for this is that it is hydrophilic so the head for the phospholipids tend to be hydrophilic because it contain the carboxylic group it contain the acid group that's why it is polar then it also contain tails these tails are nonpolar they are nonpolar in nature mean they are hydrophobic hydrophobic phobic like that so what it mean that they are water insoluble water insoluble all right they repel water they repel water well hydrophilic hydro means water philic is a friendly love okay friendly friendly love that's what philic is it's derived from some greek terms phileo is a kind of love between friends then hydro here is water phobic from the word fear okay uh, for fear which is phobia 
Okay, so that's what a phosphoric bilayer looks like. So if you have, um, all right, this is the acid group and the R chain, all right. The R, this is the carbon chain, all right. Then the acid group, this one, uh, is the one that tend to react with the phosphate, like that. And then the R is the carbon skeleton. This is the carbon skeleton. The carbon skeleton is the one we are looking at as being the tail. And then the head there is the one which contains the, the, the functional group with the phosphate. So to illustrate this, basically we put the phospholipids as having the head and the tail like that. That's how a phospholipid looks like. So this is the head. You don't have to draw everything like above and this is the tail like that. It's a carbon skeleton. This carbon skeleton may be saturated or unsaturated. So the tail may be uh, saturated or or any saturated. What it means when you say it's saturated, which means it has no double bonds, no double bonds, no double bonds. So the ones that are, which don't have double bonds are more insoluble, more insoluble, more hydrophobic. Okay. Those that are unsaturated, they have double bonds. So those with double bonds, okay, are more soluble, are more soluble. And therefore, they are more likely to form kinks. These form kinks. A kink is more like a bend or a corner. Okay, it's more like you have this, let's say this the head, and then you know this the phospholipid bilayer, all right, and then this is a kink where you find the double bond, you find this is a kink like that. So these are the kinks. So if the phospholipid uh, uh, contain double bonds, it has a kink. A kink makes the uh, 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 molecules free, makes, makes molecules free, okay, to orient, to orient. And it, they, leave, they leave room for some uh, cholesterol in, in, the, in the middle and also water. So these tend to have more ability to attract more water, those that are unsaturated, rather than those that are saturated. So that's how a phospholipid looks like. So most of the times between the tails, you find some cholesterol, water, and other molecules. All right? That's how a phospholipid is. So a bilayer in a cell membrane, let's say this is the cell membrane like that. All right? This is the extracellular fluid compartment, intracellular fluid compartment, ICF. Okay? The phospholipids are arranged in such a way that heads face water outside, and the other layer has heads facing water inside. Reason being, uh, there's water there in the intracellular, there's water there in the extracellular. So heads, since they are hydrophilic, they interact with water, okay? Then the tails are hydrophobic, they face each other. That's how the phosphoric barrier looks like, okay? Uh, in between there, you might find some integral proteins. Let's say these are the integral proteins. These are the integral, integral proteins, all right? Some of the proteins are actually peripheral proteins, all right, like that. These are peripheral proteins, peripheral proteins, peripheral proteins, all right. Other things in the cell membrane you might find on the surface, you might find some glycoproteins, okay, glycoproteins, all right, or, uh, you know, which are conjugate proteins, sugar plus proteins, ETC. So you should look up into uh, the proper diagram of uh, the, 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 the cell membrane cross-section mosaic. So you need to understand the cell membrane mosaic cross-section. All right. So for the proteins, what do proteins, uh, remember they are integral proteins that I've already uh, shown you above, and they are also peripheral proteins. So integral proteins, these are also known as transmembrane proteins, transmembrane proteins. The reason why we say transmembrane is because they wrap across the entire uh, thickness of the cell membrane. They are both hydrophilic, okay, plus hydrophobic. So they contain both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, hydrophobic properties, the integral proteins. So they can interact with everything. So you call these molecules as being amphipathic. A molecule which has got both hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties is known as amphipathic protein. 
all right, or amphipathic molecule. For example, these integral proteins. So most of them, they tend to function as the uh, uh, transporter channels. These are transporter or carrier uh, uh, channels. For example, in facilitated diffusion, they tend also to form ATPase pumps. Most of the ATPase pumps are due to the integral proteins. Then peripheral proteins, these are hydrophilic proteins. Hydrophilic meaning they only interact uh, with water. All right. So most of them, they just tend to act as receptors. They tend to function uh, as, as sites for recognition, sites for uh, recognition through the receptors. Anyway, um, it's the same, recognition through the receptors. Okay, others they act as anchoring proteins. Okay, even some integral proteins can also function as the anchoring proteins. All right, very, very important. So they just to give you just a small overview. Both of them can act for communication. All right, but integral proteins, remember that. Then you come to the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates in the cell membranes, I'll not really go into much details. Most of them, they tend to be conjugate. They tend to be conjugate, conjugate carbohydrates. Okay, meaning these are carbohydrates that um, are combined together with the proteins, like the glycoproteins, glycoproteins here. Some of them are proteoglycans, proteoglycans, all right. Some of them are glycosaminoglycans, GAGs, such as dematan sulfate, keratin sulfate, heparin sulfate, uh, chondroitin. There are so many, many, many. These, the GAGs tend to be rich in a, they tend to be rich in uronic acid. They tend to be rich in uronic acid and sulfur. All right. Therefore, they tend to attract more water because of the negative charge from the uronic acid and sulfur. So they are more hydrophilic, making the cell membrane, contributing even to the cell membrane um, uh, uh, fluidity. All right. So it's one of the contributors, okay, the carbohydrates. But they are not the main causes or they are not the main uh, 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 causes of membrane fluidity, the carbohydrates. So you should take note of that. All right. So now let's jump. We go to the cell uh, organelles. Cell organelles in the protoplasm. Protoplasm. All right. So let's look at the cell organelles that are uh, within the cytoplasm. So number one, you've got the mitochondria. We're going to talk about the mitochondria. We're going to talk about... Uh, um, uh, ribosomes, ribosomes, okay, we're going to talk about lysosomes, lysosomes, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, endoplasmic reticulum, reticulum, we're going to look at the gauge apparatus, gauge apparatus, we're going to look at uh, uh, the, the nucleus, we are also going to look at uh, uh, cyto, one, two, three, four, five, six, we are going to look at um, uh, peroxisomes, peroxisomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are going to look at the cytoskeleton, cytoskeleton, so mitochondria, ribosomes, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, gauge apparatus, nucleus, peroxisomes, cytoskeleton, uh, centrioles, okay, ETC. But these are the major ones that we are going to look at. The whole thing is to look at each of these and their functions. What the function of the mitochondria, ribosomes, lysosomes, just like that, uh, until all of them are done. So let's start with the mitochondria. Let's start with the mitochondria. So mitochondria tend to, uh, you know, it, it has, a, uh, has a two membranes. It has got outer membrane and the inner membrane with the intermembranous space with the intermembrane space between them. Okay, that's what the mitochondria is, all right? Um, it is exclusively, exclusively inherited maternally. So mitochondria is only inherited from the mother. So the mitochondria that a human being has is maternally inherited. Because during fertilization, remember, the sperm mitochondria uh, doesn't participate. So the mitochondria that a zygote or a human being inherit is coming from the mother exclusively. Mitochondria uh, 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 has its own independent, independent 
uh, DNA, okay, it tend to be secular DNA, okay, and it divides by binary fission on its own. That's what uh, uh, mitochondria is. All right, it is independent. All right, very important. The main functions of the mitochondria. What are the functions of the mitochondria? It's a powerhouse, powerhouse, which everyone knows. So meaning it's a site for ATP energy synthesis. ATP energy synthesis. ATP stands for adenylate triphosphate. It's the universal energy currents that the human body uses. Okay, readily available for use is the ATP. Okay, how does this powerhouse is, um, make ATP? Uh, most of the times to oxidative mechanisms. Oxidation of uh, uh, fat acids, oxidation of uh, sugar products, it, that's how it makes uh, ATP. It's also a site for certain biochemical reactions, for citric acid cycle, for electron transport chain. You find it in the mitochondria. Electron transport chain, for example, uh, is found on the surface of inner mitochondrial membrane. Surface of inner mitochondrial membrane. Then the citric acid cycle occurs in the matrix. Okay, so very, very uh, 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 important. All right, so take note of that. Oxidative phosphorylation under the electron transport chain, it will still occur in the matrix, but the main process, uh, the complexes are on the surface of the inner mitochondrial membrane. These are the electron transport chain complexes. So this you should remember about the mitochondria. Mitochondria also participates, participates in detoxification, detoxification of toxins, toxins, drugs. It also participates partially in apoptosis, all right, mitochondria. So it has a lot of these functions that you need to understand. So that's organelle number one. So very, very important component of mitochondria. The next organelle we can look at uh, uh, ribosomes. What are ribosomes? Okay, so ribosomes, these are granules. These are granules. Okay, there are many, many types of uh, ribosomes. Okay, you can have uh, bound, bound ribosomes. Bound ribosomes, for example, e.g. to rough endoplasmic reticulum. You can have ribosomes that are bound to rough endoplasmic reticulum. These are involved in protein uh, synthesis. The major protein synthesis is done by bound ribosomes, mean ribosomes that are bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Some of them are free ribosomes. Free ribosomes really don't do much. They can make small, small proteins, but really to a small extent. The main ones are the bound ribosomes. All right, so how, does, how do ribosomes look like? So there are many types of ribosomes. Ribosomes by nature, they are naked. They are naked, meaning no membrane. No membrane around them, they are naked. That's why you can find them in both eukaryotic uh, organisms, in humans and animals. You can also find them in prokaryotic, prokaryotic organisms, in bacteria. But the ones you find in humans and animals are different from those you find in the bacteria. In the eukaryotic organisms, the type of ribosomes that you find in eukaryotic organisms are made up of about 50% protein, 50% RNA. Okay, so these they form a unity known as ATS unit. ATS unit subdivided into 60S subunit and 40S subunit. Don't add these ones. These are not additive. All right. So prokaryotic organisms are more like um, uh, 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 composed also of protein. All right. But the protein is about uh, 35 to about 40% uh, uh, proteins. All right. And then they're about uh, 60 to about 65% being RNA, okay. This they form a unity uh, known as 70S unit. 70S unit has two subunits. The bigger subunit there, known as 50S 
subunit. The smaller subunit there, known as 30S subunit. Again, these are not additive. The whole point is just to show you that there's a difference between the ribosomes in prokaryotic organisms and ribosomes in eukaryotic organisms. So in prokaryotic organisms, you can see the subunits are different. That's why even when you are giving drugs, there are certain drugs that you can give that inhibit protein synthesis. Protein synthesis inhibitors uh, in bacteria, antibiotics, they target either 50S or 30S subunits, all right? We talked about just uh, generally uh, those ones. So I wanted to give you that example. So that's why most of the antibiotics that affect protein synthesis in bacteria do not affect protein synthesis in humans. For example, tetracycline and most of the aminoglycosides are 30S subunit inhibitors, all right? Then others, for example, azithromycin, erythromycin, are 50S subunit uh, inhibitors. So they bind there and inhibit protein synthesis. So these are some of the things I wanted you to know about uh, the ribosomes. All right, so we go to the next uh, uh, organelle number three. Which ones are those? Number, uh, number three, since you have talked about the ribosomes, I can talk about the endoplasmic reticulum, indo, endoprasmic reticulum. Endoprasmic reticulum, there are two, two major types. There's rough endoprasmic reticulum and smooth endoprasmic reticulum. The rough one, remember, it has bound ribosomes, bound ribosomal granules. That's why it looks rough, because of those ribosomal granules. These are mostly involved in protein synthesis involved in protein synthesis. All right, very, very important. Then the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, these ones, no ribosomes, no ribosomal granules. That's why they are smooth. The main function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, one are for lipid synthesis, all right, synthesis of lipids. The other thing is the calcium storage, intracellular calcium stores, okay? It also participates in also detoxification, detoxification of toxins. It also participates, okay, to some extent, but mostly calcium storage, lipid synthesis, that's the main function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. All right, the next organelle, this was organelle number what? The other one from looking at ribosomes was number what? Number three, so this is number four. So we go to the next uh, organelles, which I'll put here as number five, uh, lysosomes, lysosomes, number six, uh, peroxisomes. I'll put it as a table here, peroxisomes. All right, so lysosomes, if you look at them, these are just like a bag of uh, 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 enzymes. It's more like a bag of enzymes. Many enzymes form lysosomes, all right? more than 40 types of enzymes. There are so many, you just call them lysosomal enzymes. So these form intracellular, uh, these are intracellular digestive enzymes, digestive enzymes, all right? Some of them are bactericidal in nature. So they also participate in immunity, okay? So they are also involved in phagocytosis, involved in phagocytosis. Okay, cell eating of foreign antigens, e.g. in uh, phagocytes such as macrophages. Macrophages, you find a lot of lysosomes. Neutrophils, you find a lot of lysosomes. So they are involved in killing foreign antigens. So these are killers, all right? These, they kill. Okay, somehow they, are, they also participate in cytotoxicity. Cytotoxicity, okay, of the cells. They participate, all right? So examples of, uh, before I even go to the examples, these lysosomes are not self-replicative. These are not self-replicative. They don't replicate. Okay, they are not self-replicative. Two, these, remember, they break off from uh, gorge apparatus, from gorge apparatus. So these are some of the things. In terms of uh, pH, they tend to be acidic pH. Okay, oh, about 4.5 on average. Examples of these lysosomes include, um, um, uh, for example, hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, by nature, 
these um, uh, lysosomal enzymes, neuraminidases, neurabinidases, okay, nucleases, uh, you know, proteases, uh, ETC, okay, phospholipases, all those are lysosomal enzymes. There are so many, many, many of them, right? So there are many, all right. Well, uh, they are lysosomal. So while well, peroxisomal enzymes, which are peroxisomes, these are also known as micro bodies. Peroxisomes are also called micro bodies. What do they do? Peroxisomes. Okay. Remember these ones are self-replicative. Self-replicative. All right. These are, uh, they bud off, bud off from smooth endoplasmic reticulum. All right. So there are very few examples are the oxidases, okay, uh, catalases, catalases. Under the oxidases, you got uh, super oxidases, ETC, okay. The main thing is just to detoxify. They detoxify oxygen radicals, oxygen radicals, okay. Mainly, for example, hydrogen peroxide, which is toxic. It gets converted into water, for example, Catalysis. They do that so that water is non-toxic. Hydrogen peroxide is toxic if it accumulates in high amounts. So even bacteria that are catalyst positive, meaning they can utilize oxygen and detoxify the byproducts. Okay, these then tend to have an alkaline pH, right? They are also involved in it. Not only do they detoxify these radicals, even alcohol detoxification, alcohol, alcohol detoxification or metabolism they are involved the peroxisomes so remember that so that was organelle number five and six so we go to organelle number seven organelle number seven uh gorge apparatus i would say gorge apparatus gorge apparatus these are involved you know they uh, they're involved in packaging packaging modification modification processing uh, and uh, transport uh, transport or traffic trafficking of materials all right so that's what gorge apparatus are involved okay and they also participate in some some vesicular protein uh, vesicular uh, protein synthesis Okay, it was just a small extent. All right, so we go to the next ones. Which ones after the uh, the Goja apparatus? Um, secretory granules, secretory, secretory granules. Uh, not so much to talk about them. They are related to the um, to the Goja apparatus. So I want to talk about these ones. Endosomes, endosomes. Also, they are related to the Goja apparatus. They have almost similar functions as Goja apparatus, the endo, uh, endosomes. Okay, so number 80 organelles that we are going to look at. Centrioles, for example, centrioles. Centrioles, these, they look like a star. These produce spindles, produce spindle microtubules. Microtubules, okay, involved in cell division, involved in cell Division, okay, during mitosis, meiosis, the fiber that separate chromosomes and uh, or uh, chromatids are uh, microtubules that come from the centrioles, right? Number nine organelle uh, is the nucleus, okay? The nuclear, remember, is the largest organelle, largest organelle, all right, in the cell. Organelle, not organ, so it's the largest organelle in the cell. Is the nucleus okay? It contain DNA. It contain DNA wrapped around the proteins known as histones, wrapped around histone uh, protein particles. Okay, that's what the nuclear is. Okay, it's the largest. It, uh, and by structure, the nuclear also has a, a nuclear envelope. Has a, an envelope, all right, with the poles, with the poles, all right. So I'm not going into details and talking about other associated terms. Other terms associated with the nuclear include the uh, uh, nucleolymph, uh, it includes nucleolacy. So I just want you to nucleosome, 
you know, nucleosome, okay, nucleolus, nucleolus, okay, nucleoplasm, nucleolympho, okay, it is, or cariolympho, it is, there are many, many uh, terms associated with the nucleus. So, and basically that's just what, just know that I'm not going to talk about it more in details, but it's just a summary, but I'm giving you the most important thing. Okay, the last type of organelles here are the, uh, the, 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 the cytoskeleton, cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton, there are about three major types of cytoskeleton. Here you've got a, a micro, uh, micro pyramids, micro tubules, and the um, intermediate pyramids. You've got the, um, so which one should we start with? Microtubules, which I've already, microtubules, which I've already mentioned here. Uh, for example, the spindles that come from centrioles. Spindles from centrioles. Okay, these are involved in uh, movement, locomotion, cell division. That's what they do, and I've already mentioned. The other ones are the microfilaments. Example of microfilament, for example, uh, EG actin. Okay, it's a protein molecule involved in cell division. In, not in, in muscle contraction, sorry. Muscle contraction, find actin filament. Mato, muscle contraction, okay, that's what they're involved in. Then you also have uh, intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments, intermediate filaments. These are involved in the various functions of support, support, all right, also involved in locomotion, okay, shape. They do a lot of things in the body. That's what intermediate filaments Ah, So this was just a summary of general cell physiology and uh, structure. So there are a few, few things that I've left out um, uh, as I was talking about. But I mean, if you understood this one, even at a degree level, you can still get more than 95%. Okay, I've just left about less than 3% of the information. So it's very, very uh, uh, important. So enjoy your lectures and uh, enjoy and uh, watch just a free video that I've given you. And uh, we end here uh, unless there are issues. You can uh, comment, you can, uh, you know, criticize, you can give feedback. Otherwise, enjoy yours perfectly. I'm a physician by nature, but I also lecture. I just wanted to give this as a free information, especially those that take uh, physiology or biology. Biology, secondary level, it's a bit too detailed for you. You just need to know some few, few basics. At degree level, uh, diploma level, you need to know this. Right, especially uh, everything. All right.